I want to thank you, Shu Min Wang, for the opportunity to present uh, our progress uh, on this brain initiative in our brain initiative EU01. Uh, so, um, our goal is to develop a new time gated diffuse correlation spectroscopy system for functional imaging of the human brain. This um, project has a big hardware component, but it also spans software, um, algorithms, Monte Carlo simulation, uh, measurements in phantoms, uh, and uh, measurements in human subjects. And uh, for all these, uh, we are assembled. Uh, a team of leading experts in diffuse optic at uh, Mass General Hospital in Boston University uh, that are um, um, expert on the near infrared spectroscopy technology and application and translation to humans. And, uh, and uh, a team at uh, Lincoln Laboratory at MIT that uh, bring the leading expertise in new technology have and um, so our overreaching goal is to develop a, a DCS system that produce high resolution images of functional blood flow changes in the brain and um, respect to current technology we want to achieve uh, two three times improvement in sensitivity spatial resolution and resistance to extracerebral physiology uh, for the, to do that, uh, we want to operate in time domain, uh, use uh, a longer wavelength than typical DCS wavelength, and um, develop custom laser and custom detector optimized for these applications, and then move uh, to a whole head uh, coverage system with uh, many sources and detect. So very briefly, diffuse correlation spectroscopy uh, is a near infrared spectroscopy method that directly measures blood flow by measuring the intensity fluctuation generated by the, the speckle interference with the moving scatterer. So this uh, fluctuation um, gives us the temporal intensity autocorrelation function G2, and its decay is proportional to blood flow uh, faster is the decay faster is the blood flow. Uh, the problem is that uh, when we look at tissue, we cannot, this mm, with CW uh, uh, methods, we cannot mm, this, mm, differentiate between the long path and the short uh, bottom paths. And a few years ago, we introduced uh, time domain uh, diffuse correlation spectroscopy. We use uh, um, narrow pulses and uh, photon counting detector that I can detect the arrival time of the photon and, uh, and generate a uh, TPSF. And from that, if we chose early arriving photons, uh, looking at an early gate, we can get this, this superficial blood flow and look in a, a late photon, we can go deeper. Now, when we develop, initially developed this technology, we um, were using typical uh, uh, wavelengths for DCS. And we realized that for several advantages, it's better to move at 1064 nanometer. Uh, the, the most important advantage is the higher photon availability, which is given by many factors uh, that I'm explaining here. The first one is that uh, uh, for we can send more light for regulatory standard. Uh, the energy uh, longer wavelength has more photons and uh, there is a lower effective attenuation at this wavelength versus uh, the near infrared wavelengths. So um, adding a, uh, multiplying all these factors, we get a, a factor 10 improvement on photon detection as shown uh, in 11 human subjects uh, using appropriate detector. Now, why I need all these photons? Uh, mm, 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 let me use Monte Carlo simulation to explain that. So, um, is it known that to increase brain sensitivity with NIRS and DCS, we need to increase uh, source detector separation? So, if I use a 3D segmented head uh, and run by Monte Carlo, you can see in CWDCS, brain sensitivity increased with source detector separation. 
Uh, now, in my Monte Carlo, uh, like in real life, I can add all the noise and the fact uh, that there are much less photon and larger separation, and there is still a scalp crosstalk. And you can see that uh, effectively, I can now um, measure farther than 2.5 centimeter at 765 nanometer, where I can go farther because I have much more photons at a, uh, in a better SNR at 1064 nanometer, and that increases my brain sensitivity. The same thing in time gated DCS, so uh, my brain sensitivity increase by selecting later gates, late uh, start time respect to the laser peak at zero. And, uh, um, and because of the noise, uh, we can reach a higher sensitivity at 1064 with respect to 765 nanometer. So uh, the first um, step to achieve this uh, technological improvement is to develop a laser system optimal for uh, at this wavelength. To do that, we, we use a picoquant seed laser, which is quite broad, and uh, to reduce the, the laser um, width and select uh, uh, the highest coherence part, we use an uh, uh, electro-optic modulator, uh, modulator. And then we have a two amplification stage uh, to get uh, the right uh, optical power. Uh, the nice thing of working at 1064, I, I can use uh, iterbiodope optical fiber uh, amplifiers, which don't, um, we just increase the laser power and don't affect the, the laser property. Now, with the EOM, I can make a, nar a shape the pulse to be narrow in a different spot respect to the seed laser. And uh, now, um, if I use this part that is noisy, you see the beta that is uh, the, the plateau of the autocorrelation function is kind of low and uh, increases by going more toward the center of the laser. That means uh, that there is more coherence in the center of the laser. This laser is uh, coherence length is about five centimeter and I achieve all of that by selecting the peaks around laser shape around the peak. So in this way, I obtain a almost transform limited laser pulse. Why I need a transform limited is because when I then go at late gates, if it is not transform limited, I mix coherent and incoherent light and I decrease my beta and increase the, uh, decrease also the SNR. Uh, instead, with the transform limited shape and more Gaussian, beta doesn't change with the time gate uh, and, uh, and I get higher beta at the late gate that I want to measure. So we build our laser and uh, we assemble it uh, in a cart uh, to be able to do human subject measurements. And uh, you see the red sticker is fully approved for human subjects. And uh, we develop a small probe, uh, a different separation to test what's the optimal separation in, in operation. And uh, because the detector we are using right now are not gated, we have a time tagger to digitize the arrival time of the photon at high resolution, and we have the FPGA correlator in there. And for detector, while we wait for Lincoln Lab uh, uh, development uh, of the SPAD, we are using superconducting nanowire single photon detector. These are optimal detector with very high photon efficiency and uh, high temporal responses. But uh, the problem is they're very bulky, they are very noisy, they need the cryostat because uh, they operate at uh, a temperature less than 3 Kelvin and they are very expensive. So definitely it's okay for a few channel uh, uh, approval principle, but uh, it cannot be extended to a full head system. So the first uh, measurements we did uh, is a simple pressure modulation. So what happened now, we use a tourniquet around the head and we um, pre uh, exercise pressure in the tourniquet for about 60 seconds. And what happened at early gates, um, the scalp blood flow is reduced and I see this decrease in, in the blood flow index. And uh, if I go a later gate, you can see the effect of the scalp changes are reduced uh, as expected, but 
and um, I can push a little bit farther. Here we acquire a 10 hertz, uh, so 600 picosecond is kind of at the limit for this uh, uh, acquisition. And the noise that you see here is not instrumental noise, but it's physiological noise. If I show you the the curve without moving average, you can see a lot of oscillations. And this oscillation, if I zoom in, is the flow, pulsatile flow. Interesting here is that before compression, the, the early gate pulsatile is the same amplitude of the late gate pulsatile, but when I uh, decrease the, the scalp blood flow, uh, this, the, uh, the, late, the early gates are damped, the oscillations, while the, the late gate remain high. Uh, more important for the final application is measuring uh, uh, brain activity. And these are very preliminary data on one subject. Um, we ask the subject to count backward, uh, and subtracting uh, one digit to a three digit number. And uh, we did it five times for 20 seconds each. And uh, you can see a late gate, there is a nice blood flow increase during the brain activity. Uh, so these promising preliminary data um, are just the beginning and we are continuing and doing more uh, experiments. Uh, at the same time, uh, our collaborator Lincoln Lab are, detect are developing the detectors. Uh, detector at these wavelengths are a challenge. So for the regular DCS, uh, CWDCS, uh, we use a silicon photodiode um, and, uh, and the after pulse probability of this diode uh, happen at uh, times that are not in physiologically important for this yes because the blood flow decay is start around 10 to the minus six seconds uh, but the problem with the silicon is that they have a very poor photon efficiency in the near infrared especially at 10 uh, 10 000, uh, 1, 000 nanometer and uh, if i try to make them more efficient uh, photon efficiency, I, get, I lose in temporal resolution. And so they're really not usable in time domain DCS. If I use commercial ingas detector, uh, the after pulse probability, it, it, it fell uh, exactly in the range of physiological blood flow. So this uh, essentially is, um, this after pulse uh, probability is uh, a correlated noise. Uh, so uh, every time the, a photon uh, is detected, uh, there is uh, a, a fake uh, uh, photon that correlates with it. And uh, if I want to eliminate or at least alleviate, I have to turn off the detector for a, a period. So is a hold of time in this case around 10 microsecond. And still when I return the, 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 the detector on, there is still a tail that contaminate my G2. Uh, uh, Lincoln Lab use uh, indium phosphide technology that has a, a smaller after pulsing and less tail. Uh, but still there is something there. So our strategy is to create a, ma a macro pixel that use uh, a number of detectors. Uh, and when one of them is off, the other continue to detect. So that if I calculate the outer correlation function of two or more detector, I can reduce uh, this after pulsing probability. And even better, if I do a cross correlation, I can decrease uh, this after pulsing effect just using two detectors. So uh, Lincoln Lab in the last year has developed uh, the first uh, digital readout integrated circuit, ROIC, uh, with this macro pixel. So each uh, the detector um, pixel has a 16 micro pixel. And, uh, and uh, they use uh, for design one uh, for the autocorrelation, one with 16 independent outputs to test the cross correlation, and one that is a balanced detector to further decrease this after pulsing. During the last year, they built a test board to test the functioning of the ROIC, and they verified that it works as expected. 
And then they started to hybridize the ROIC and add the detector on top of it. They add the antian silicon, uh, a silicon hybrid, and the indium, and more recently the indium phosphide hybrids. And, uh, and they're starting to test this detector now, currently. Uh, this um, test will inform uh, the final generation ROIC uh, with the design that best uh, um, is, uh, serve the time domain DCS. While we're, um, Jonathan is doing this test, we we were able to uh, use uh, um, Indian phosphide based uh, detector that doesn't have the micropixel, but we can illuminate 16 spot with uh, this uh, fiber arrangement. And we started to verify the difference between uh, autocorrelation function and cross correlation function of 16 detector. This is a very preliminary result, a so very low light. So, in conclusion, so we we during the last year and a half, I have uh, we have uh, assembled uh, a pulse laser at 1064 nanometer and started the uh, human subject measurements with it. And uh, we have designed and tested the first ROIC and the first FPI detector. And we're now running tests to characterize this detector and inform the second generation. So the next step will be for the laser, add uh, another um, amplifier stage to be able to illuminate the multiple locations for the detector build the second generation FPA with the micro lenses and then uh, continue our human test uh, with uh, the first and second generation detector. Thank you so much for your attention.